Well, hey there, and welcome back to my dirty little desktop. I know it's been a while, and I apologize. However, the fact is my LED light stopped working, and because my battery packs weren't being charged correctly, so the battery charger pack was bad. And due to the coronavirus, me getting my 12-volt uh, charger took a lot longer than expected. But we're here. We're, we're finally here, we're back in the saddle, and I apologize for the wait, but today I got something a little special. A good friend of mine named Nick Beardia, I'm sure a lot of you guys know me from him and him from me, uh, sent me some of his models he has on his eBay store to review. Now, I said my first actual professional taste, well, professional quote-unquote taste with 3D printed resin models. And I gotta say, they were surprising in a lot of ways due to the fact that you could have a very, very intricately detailed model for a very, very low price. But uh, I have a few critiques, a few things to say, and an overall impression of what he's selling. But the first thing you're gonna notice is that a lot of these models come like this. A lot of these 3D resin printed models operate on a uh, support system. So, so it's a big plate these things sit on. And they're slowly pulled out, out of a, that sounds weird. They're slowly pulled out of a pool of resin. And then these supports here are what keep the model from bending over or slouching uh, during the, the printing process in the printer. Now there's, I, I know why they use these, is to keep the model completely, you know, rigid and not like being floppy or bendy because it's pretty soft before it's cured. They got to cure these and I believe UV light before they're good to go. The issue is, this is your first critique, Neckbeardia, James, um, you got to work on these supports. Because there are a lot of supports and a lot of the times a lot of these 3d printers they'll fuss around with these things for a good couple of hours figuring out the minimal amount of supports they need the reason why these ports are important these supports are important as in making sure just the correct amount you need is that these leave these little tiny divots all over the model and they're like they're like little little bumps and they're very very hard to get clean Oop. I snapped his arm off didn't I well, I guess we'll jump forward to the next critique, James. Um, these are very brittle. And I would highly recommend getting a resin, resin flexive additive so that they're not as brittle. Because it's going to tie into the support thing. Due to the fact these are so brittle, when you're trying to cut away these support bumps, you tend to crack off and break off spines and horns and teeth. It's uh, it's it's kind of a shame when you have a very very intricately de uh, detailed model, and you accidentally break away a piece of the model trying to clean it. So, the first thing I would do for any, for any of you printers out there who want to make a who want to make a more substantially better product, focus on getting just the minimal amount of supports you need. That way the model is less marred by those support contact points. Second, get a resin flexive additive. This will, this help your, this will keep your, your model from being too, too brittle, too inflexible, and help it from shattering. That was a small drop right there, and that was a pretty, pretty, pretty good little break. Now, most other resin models uh, won't do that as easily due to the fact there's a flexive additive that helps the resin flex and not break off like that because like that that sucker flew <laughs> i don't know where that's i don't know where that some bitch went but i gotta find it later before i step on it now those are the the only the these those are only the two bad points i see about these these are exquisite models but for the printer in this case james my good friend of mine Boy, find you a goddamn flexive additive. <laughs> do me that favor. Do your customers that favor and find a flexive additive. It's just going to help the, 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 the lifetime of the model and help it survive those drops in the gaming table or a cat knocking it off or what have you. It won't save them against tile floors. Tile floors fuck up anything, but it'll certainly help. And the second thing I want you to do, I want you to stick around with that program of yours and not know you're using some kind of cutting program. And just get the minimal amount of supports that you need. 
because a lot of these wings I got, a lot of these wings and big broad surfaces, and especially the capes, um, a lot of the times um, it's kind of it kind of ruins the cape or it ruins the armor. It takes a lot, a lot of effort to clean up. So do me and your customers a favor, any of you, and work on those supports and work on adding those nice flexive additives to help your resin model survive in your customers hands remember customers are dumb and clumsy look at me I just dropped us and broke it you can't trust us add your additives now this is the the demon set the demon set's got a lot of cool little fucking models in it you will not find these models I don't think anywhere else GW can't do this well good of a model now here's a problem though I mean they are monopose we all get that but they're such full of flavor and character it's almost it's kind of like Mears, where Mears is also monopose, but it's just such a good and good looking model that you kind of forgive them for being monopose. And these are 3D resin printed, so they're cheaper as well, all, in all, all things considered. Now, you got an incubus here, so I guess if you're a female player, you want a hot bad boy on the table, well, here's a model for you. He's got a lot of, uh, a lot of muscle structure going on. And tight glutes. <laughs> and these guys here come with wings. So in the package you get from whoever you're buying these from, hopefully the link down below to Neckbeardia's page, you'll get these wings and they glue in right in here. That's Incubus. You got more of these little demon boys. I like the fact they got these. They're, they're kind of like on, like Onis. They got the big ponytail and those huge horns, and they got a pretty good look around them. Be great for any kind of demon or Oni or that kind of themed army. Really good looking. I like the way they look, and the weapons look pretty good too. They have shield options as well. These little shields here. The shields look really good actually. I wouldn't mind just having a whole pack of these shields printed off and sent to me. I like those. The weapons look like uh, they remind me of the old Savage Orc clubs and swords. They have that Savage Orc look about them. Really like those. I think I think they'd be really good, like obsidian stone painted up. It'd be really cool. But yeah. So, so most so most of these ground troopers will have those, uh, those 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 savage orc clubs looking things. This guy's got quite the pose. Look at look at his grace. Look at the finesse and how. <laughs> this is one of those guys where uh, James did the right thing here. He did just the amount of supports he needed on this one, so it's very very little pock marking going on from the. Um, what sound my my mouth make right then? That was weird. But this is what uh, kind of what it looks like when you do your correct support structuring, and you get very, very little marring and pock marking from the support structures. But look at that pose, though. That dude is fucking getting it. <laughs> and this is some of the wings. This is some of the, this is the banner. Now here's one of the parts where you gotta focus on them struts. The banner front looks really nice. I like this banner front. Turn around. This is where all the support structures were. You gotta get in there and cut all those bastards out, and this makes the back of the banner look janky. That's one of those times where you gotta get, you know, it's easier to minimize when you have the minimal amount of support struts in there. When you have a whole cage of supports, well, you got that's a lot of cage to clean up. And I have a few primed up so you can see more of the details. As you can see, these prime up wonderfully. A lot of that detail just snaps out. Now, you're gonna see some discoloration here. I dropped them on the carpet <laughs> while I was walking back to the room from Priman. So I had to go in there with some uh, with some, some flesh tone and try and <laughs> cover up those uh, those little marks when I dropped them. But here's one of the big hammer sludge boys in Prime. And you can just see the amount of crazy detail that goes into these resin models. I'm actually quite pleased by the amount of detail they get. Also, you can see where uh, since, since this model, the, the resin, the resin, the current resin, current resin, is so brittle when you cut it it tends to shear away and clip away and those struts I'm still cleaning those damn struts up through the day and just uh, pain but, but I mean but overall though it's like it's just the models are so ridiculously detailed and awesome looking that you almost don't mind their monopose and I'm sure with a bit bit of tinkering with ball and socket printing he could probably have these in multipose Take a little bit of tinkering. All things take take tinkering. Here's a. Uh, if you're not over the age of 18, look away. But here is a uh, succubus, and you know, she definitely adheres to the name. <laughs> I'll t at least tell you that. 
But again, this is a very simple one. This is one, this is one of the very simple kind of model models there is of, of, of the Demon Army. But there's a lot of character to this model. <laughs> but it looks pretty good. I like it. I like the little, little Succubus model. Because here, here is where Nick Beardius, uh, you know, um, equality shines. He's got, he's got a, let's see here, he's got a model for the boys, and he's got a model for the girls. And if you're a girl who likes girls, here's one for you. Boys who like boys, hey, you're looking right here. All about equality in Nick Beardia. All about that equality. <laughs> All right. And then, and then my actual favorite is this little warrior chick here. I cannot wait to paint up. It's a female demon warrior. She's got this awesome looking fucking club and a shield and this awesome looking armor. And this was one that was curiously spared of a lot of support structure divots. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is one of the better looking ones I think I got. And I got it all cleaned up more or less well enough. Again, having more flexible resin will help with the cleanup a lot more. But yeah, this one's going to be a fucking hoot to paint up and I cannot wait. And when they're all painted up, I'm going to put them on the turntable and y'all can look at them. Now, I did paint up one, just so y'all can see what it looks like painted up. Come here, you. This is the one I painted. Now, they adhere to paint extremely well. They adhere to um, inks very well. A lot of muscle ridge to get in there and paint up. But yeah, I decided to go with a blue skin, orange horn kind of thing with an orange kind of weapon. And I liked how... Yeah, I, li I like his teeth. Thank you, phone. Thank you. Good morning, whoever's texting me. Um, I love his teeth. Look at those teeth. <laughs> I love his mouth. I don't know why. It's just, they crack me up. I don't know why. I just love his teeth. And uh, I did a purple wash for his, uh, his uh, back fur there. And the muscle tone is absolutely fucking fantastic on his models. And it, it just takes it that ink so well and it soaks it up. Go in there with your layers and layer it up. I did a brown ink wash on the horns and they came out really well, I think. A little bit of metal. There's not a lot of metal on these boys. It's mostly horn and flesh and tentacles. Now, if you see here, if you don't get those connection points completely cleared up, and I painted him specifically for this reason, these bumps right here are not part of the model. These bumps are where support structures were, and I just couldn't get them fully flush. So, in this particular instance, they work with the model. These bumps work with the model, and that's fine here. However, it may not work in other uh, situations. So, to all you printers out there, get those support structures under control. It just helps with the model in the long run. I love this weapon. I love how this weapon came out. I think it, I think it came out really nice. These horns came out nice, too. I was... Holding my breath, trying to clean these horns up. Cause I knew how. I knew how. I knew how. I, under, I understood how brittle the resin was, and I was sweating. But I got it done. I got it done. But yeah, I love how these models came. Uh, this model came out. I can't. I cannot wait to paint up the rest of these. The rest are gonna be an absolute fucking blast to paint up. It's gonna be fun. Painting should be fun. Models should be fun, and these are fun. But yeah, there you go. These are some of the models you can buy from Neckberia. The link will be down below. I hope you... Oof, that was a weird burp. I hope you guys can find all the fun that I had in these models as well. But, Neckberia, Mr. James, for the love of God, <laughs> add a resin flexive additive just to help with you know, keeping the model alive, not shredding and falling apart and breaking. It's going to help in the long run. And it'll help the longevity of these models. Additionally, just try and work on work on the support structures. Just try and get the minimal amount that we need. At the exact same time, when the mop, when the resin's a little more flexive, it'd be easier to cut and clean up. But that is my review of Neck Beardy's 3D printed models. Highly enjoyable. I've even I have the undead to review next. You probably see it up there in that corner. Something I'm working on. And I hope you guys look forward to doing that with me as well. Yeah, I like these. These are nice. But this has been Guard Bro. Keep a strong dice hand out there, and happy wargaming.